Imagine this scenario. You wake up early before the sun rises. You put on your boots and walk out to the pasture. You look at your herd. You have invested thousands of dollars in quality grass. You have spent a fortune on genetics. You have done everything the books told you to do. But when you look closely at your cattle, you notice something terrifying. Their coats are rough and dull. Their ribs are showing more than they should. And when you weigh them at the end of the month, the scale does not move. They are eating, but they are not growing. You are literally watching your money evaporate into thin air. Do you know what is happening? It is not a curse and it is not bad luck. It is a silent thief that steals the profit from 70% of farms around the world. You are feeding your cows, but you are not nourishing them. There is a massive difference. Most ranchers believe that green grass and a block of white salt are enough to build a massive animal. That is the lie that keeps you poor. That is the mistake that separates the hobby farmers from the profitable producers. Today, I am going to reveal the exact mineral strategy that changes everything. We are going to talk about the fuel injection system of your cattle. If you get this mix right, you can boost feed efficiency by over 20%. That means for every pound of grass they eat, they convert more of it into meat and muscle rather than waste. But be careful, because there is a specific ingredient that most people ignore, and if you leave it out, the entire system fails. And what is worse is that almost nobody talks about it, because selling you cheap, ineffective supplements is a billion-dollar industry. Stay with me, because in a few minutes I am going to give you the formula that turns a stagnant herd into a profit machine. Let us start by understanding the engine. A cow is not just a stomach, it is a fermentation vat on four legs. When a cow eats grass, she is not actually feeding herself. She is feeding billions of bacteria and protozoa living inside her rumen. Those microscopic bugs are the ones doing the heavy lifting. They break down the fiber and turn it into energy. But here is the catch. Those bacteria have very specific requirements. If they do not get the right minerals, they go on strike. Their population drops. Digestion slows down. The cow eats the grass, but it passes right through her without being absorbed. Have you ever seen manure that looks like stacked hay? If you look at the cow pies in your pasture and you can still see the shape of the grass blades or undigested grain, you have a crisis on your hands. That is literally money on the ground. It means the rumen bugs are starving. They lack the tools to break down that fiber. You are paying for feed that the animal cannot use. The most common mistake I see when visiting ranches is the salt block. You go to the farm supply store and you buy that 50-pound block of red or white salt. You throw it in the pasture and you feel good about yourself. You think you have done your job. But let me tell you the harsh truth. That block is mostly sodium chloride, just table salt. Sure, the cows love it, they will lick it all day long. But it is like giving a child candy when they need vegetables. It tastes good, but it builds nothing. Sodium is important, yes, it regulates water balance and nerve function. But sodium alone does not build bone. It does not build muscle enzyme systems, and it certainly does not help the rumen bacteria digest dry forage. You need a complete mineralized salt strategy. Before I dive into the specific elements of the mix, let me ask you something. Have you noticed your cows chewing on wood? or maybe licking rocks, or even worse, chewing on old bones they find in the field. This is called pica. It is a desperate cry for help. Your animal is telling you that it is severely deficient in phosphorus. And this brings us to the first major component of our high efficiency mix, phosphorus. Phosphorus is the energy currency of the body. Without phosphorus, the cow cannot transfer energy from the food to the cells. You can have the best genetics in the world, but if phosphorus is low, the cow will never reach her potential. It is also the key to reproduction. If you have cows that are not cycling or heifers that are taking forever to get pregnant, look at your mineral trough. Phosphorus deficiency is the number one cause of poor fertility in grazing cattle. But here is where it gets tricky and where many lose money. 
phosphorus is expensive. It is usually the most expensive ingredient in the bag. So what do cheap manufacturers do? They lower the phosphorus levels to keep the price down. You buy the cheap bag thinking you are saving money, but you are actually losing thousands in lost weight gain and open cows. You must read the label. You need to ensure the bioavailability of that phosphorus is high. Now, you might be thinking that you just need to buy the most expensive bag and you will be fine. Not exactly. There is a balance, a delicate ratio that if broken can cause even more problems. I am going to explain the calcium to phosphorus ratio in a moment and why getting it wrong can lead to a disaster called water belly and steers, but first I need to ask you a favor. If you are realizing that you might have been feeding your herd the wrong way, do not worry. We are here to fix it. This channel, Biggest Bulls and Cow, is dedicated to turning average cattle operations into top-tier businesses. If you want to stop losing money and start gaining pounds, hit that subscribe button right now. Join our community of serious cattlemen and cattle women. We do not deal in myths, we deal in results. Go ahead, click it, and let us continue building your legacy. Welcome back. Now, let us talk about the skeleton of your operation, calcium. You know calcium builds bones. That is elementary school knowledge. But did you know that calcium is essential for muscle contraction? The heart is a muscle. The rumen is a huge muscle sac that needs to contract constantly to mix the feed. If calcium levels drop, the rumen stops moving. The cow stops ruminating. Digestion halts. In growing cattle, Calcium is non-negotiable. But here is the secret. You cannot just dump calcium and phosphorus into a trough and hope for the best. They compete with each other. They are like two boxers in a ring. If you have too much calcium, it blocks the absorption of phosphorus. If you have too much phosphorus, it blocks calcium. The magic ratio you need to aim for is two parts calcium to one part phosphorus. Two to one. Keep that number in your head. Write it down, two to one. If you feed high grain diets, which are naturally high in phosphorus, you need to add extra calcium to balance it out. If you are on dry winter pasture, which is low in everything, you need a balanced supplement. Now, I promise to tell you about the mix that boosts feed efficiency. We have covered the macro minerals, but the real magic happens in the micro, the trace minerals. These are needed in tiny amounts, but their impact is massive. I am talking about zinc, copper, selenium, and manganese. Think of zinc as the mechanic that repairs the body. It is essential for hoof health. Do you have cattle causing trouble with foot rot or lameness? A lame cow does not walk to water. A lame cow does not graze. A lame cow loses weight rapidly. Zinc strengthens the skin and the hoof integrity. But more importantly, zinc helps the gut lining absorb nutrients. High levels of bioavailable zinc have been proven to increase average daily gain because the animal simply processes food better. Then there is copper. Copper is the immune system warrior. It also plays a massive role in enzyme systems that convert food to muscle. A copper deficient cow often has a bleached coat. If your black cows are turning a rusty red color, that is not a sunburn. That is a copper deficiency. And if they are deficient in copper, their immune system is weak. This means they spend energy fighting off low-level infections instead of growing. You want that energy going into weight gain, not fighting sickness. But here is the danger zone I warned you about earlier, the interaction between minerals. There are antagonists. Iron, sulfur, and molybdenum love to bind with copper. If your water is high in sulfur or iron, it locks up the copper in the rumen. The cow eats the mineral but cannot absorb it. This is why using chelated or organic minerals is vital. Chelated means the mineral is attached to an amino acid. It is like putting a protective raincoat on the mineral so it can pass through the hostile environment of the rumen and get absorbed in the small intestine where it belongs. So, how do you mix this? How do you apply this tomorrow on your farm? You have two options. You can buy a commercial premix, or you can mix your own. Mixing your own gives you control, but it requires precision. 
A common recipe for a high-efficiency loose mineral mix involves mixing a high phosphorus mineral with quality trace mineralized salt. But you must control the intake. Cows have a craving for salt, not necessarily for minerals. Salt is the carrier, it is the vehicle. If the cows are not eating enough mineral, you remove some salt to make it more concentrated. If they are eating too much and burning a hole in your pocket, you add more white salt to limit their intake. You are the chemist here, you have to observe. But there is one more critical element that boosts efficiency that nearly everyone forgets. It is not a mineral, it is a biological catalyst. I am talking about yeast cultures. Adding live yeast culture to your mineral mix can stabilize the rumen pH. It stimulates the bacteria that digest fiber. Studies have shown that adding yeast can improve fiber digestion by 10 to 15%. That is free energy from the same grass they were already eating. Imagine this, you have a steer. He eats 25 pounds of dry matter a day. Without the right mineral mix and yeast, he digests maybe 55% of that. The rest is manure. You introduce this mineral strategy. You balance the calcium and phosphorus. You provide chelated zinc and copper. You add yeast. Suddenly, his digestion jumps to 65 or 70%. He is extracting more energy from every bite. He gains an extra half pound a day. Multiply that by 100 cows. Multiply that by 365 days. The math is staggering. We are talking about thousands of pounds of extra beef for just pennies a day in proper supplementation. However, you must be vigilant. There is a time of year when this mix needs to change drastically. During the wet season when grass is lush and green, it is high in potassium and low in magnesium. This creates a deadly condition known as grass tetany. The high potassium blocks magnesium absorption. The cow goes down, shakes violently, and can die within hours. To prevent this, you must switch to a high magnesium mineral mix, often called high mag mineral, before the green grass shoots up. You see, livestock farming is not a passive business. It is active management. You are managing a living, breathing, biological system. The salt and mineral mix is the leverage point. It is the small hinge that swings the big door. Do not fall for the marketing of shiny blocks that smell like candy. Look at the tag. Look for the levels of phosphorus. Look for the source of copper. Is it copper oxide? That is basically rust and the cow cannot use it. You want copper sulfate or copper amino acid complex. Quality inputs equal quality outputs. I want you to try this. Do an experiment. Take a group of your cattle and put them on a high-quality loose mineral program with the specifications I just mentioned. Keep another group on the standard cheap block. Monitor their manure, watch their coats shine up, and most importantly, weigh them after 90 days. The results will shock you. You will see a transformation that you did not think was possible. The efficiency of your herd is directly tied to the diligence of your management. You cannot afford to be lazy with nutrition. Every day a cow is deficient is a day she is not working for you. She is costing you. We have covered a lot of ground today. We talked about the rumen bugs, the danger of plain salt, the power of phosphorus, the balance of calcium, and the immunity shield of copper and zinc. We even touched on the secret weapon of yeast cultures. Now the ball is in your court. The information is useless if you do not apply it. Go to your feed store, read the labels, ask the hard questions. Do not settle for, it is what everyone else buys. Everyone else is usually breaking even. You want to be profitable. If you found this information valuable, if you learned something that can save you money or save a cow, please leave a comment below. Tell us where you are from and what mineral challenges you face in your region. Are you dealing with sandy soil deficient in selenium or maybe high iron clay? Share your story. We learn from each other. And listen, being a rancher is a tough job. It is lonely work sometimes, but you are not alone. You are part of a global community of people who love the land and love their animals. Here at Biggest Bulls and Cow, we are committed to bringing you the best technical knowledge in a way that is easy to understand and easy to apply. 
We have so much more to cover in future videos. We are going to dive deep into genetics, pasture rotation, and disease prevention. But we can only do that if you stay with us. So click that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications so you never miss a tip that could save your herd. Share this video with a neighbor. Maybe send it to that friend who is always complaining that his cows are too thin. Help him out. Let us raise the standard of our industry together. Thank you for your time today. Go check your mineral troughs. Your cows are waiting. Subscribe now and I will see you in the next video with more strategies to build the biggest bulls and the most productive cows. Let's get to work.